In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you four different methods for creating dots on a map. The examples on the right hand side show us a density map, a regular dot map, using the rounding function to create groupings of locations, and then using the hex bin function. Let's take a look at each of those. We're going to start by adding the latitude and longitude onto the rows and the columns. Now this particular data set that I'm looking at is rat sighting data in the city of New York. You can see I have some information about the borough in the city, the date that it was reported, but most importantly are these three columns on the right hand side. I have unique key, latitude, and longitude. So the latitude and longitude are obviously the location of the sighting, and the unique key is a, is a unique number assigned to each case. So after I've added the latitude and longitude onto the columns and rows, you'll see that I just get a single dot here, which is the centroid of all of those points, or the average of all of those points. To give it the detail needed to show me every single rat sighting, I'm going to take the unique key and drag it onto the detail shelf and choose add all members. And now we have our dots on a map. To make this look a bit better, the first thing I'm going to do is I like to go ahead and change the mark type. Even though it says automatic and it's a circle, I'm going to go ahead and set it to circle anyway. That way it kind of makes it stick. So from here, I'm going to just reduce the size down. Okay, and then maybe reduce the transparency or reduce the opacity. And we can start to see things a bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the count of the records onto the color shelf. And I'm doing that just so I can pick a color that works for me. Or actually I don't even need to do that. I'm just going to click on the color palette and go to more colors. At least for me it's on more colors. And then I'm just going to pick something from my color wheel. So these are colors that I've used recent that I've used recently that I've saved. So maybe I'll just go ahead and pick that color there. All right, so again, I would probably reduce the transparency a bit more so we can see the clusters of the rat sightings and even maybe reduce the, the size of the dots. So this is our dots on a map. Okay, the next thing I could do is I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that sheet. And this time, all I need to do is change my mark type to density in order to make it a density map. Now, you'll see that everything kind of disappeared here. That's because of my, uh, my opacity. So I'm going to raise that back up to 100%. And maybe I'll change my color palette this time to something like the, uh, a common one that people like to use is the, um, uh, the red-green color palette. And we get something like that. Or perhaps, uh, let's see, what would be another color, color palette we could use? Maybe something like like that one that flips it the other direction around. And then you have these two options for intensity and opacity. But before I do that, I'm going to reduce the size of the circles. And you can see I start to see a bit more spacing uh, between the circles. So back on the color shelf, I can go ahead and increase the intensity. And you can see that the, the, um, the areas where there's more sightings have a greater intensity. I tend to not play around with the opacity because I don't like how it makes it go really pale. Um, but, but that is an option as well if you want to, for example, see the streets below it. Okay, so you can kind of set the intensity to, to whatever value you would like to get the kind of view you're looking for. So this is our density map. The next one we want to do is to take the locations and round them. So I'm going to create a new calculated field. I'm going to call this round x. And I'm just going to use the round function and I want to round the latitude. And let's start by rounding it to one decimal place to see how it looks. I'm then going to create another calculated field that is my round y. And again, I'm going to use the round function, but this time I'm going to use longitude and then uh, one decimal. So longitude would be my, oh, sorry, this should be my round x. So uh, I'll just call this one round long. And to make it easier, I'll call this one round lat. And I can go ahead and assign these geographic locations. So the round latitude, I'm going to assign it a geographic role of latitude. <coughs> and the round longitude, I'm going to assign it a geographic role of longitude. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and move these up to be dimensions. That way, when I double click on them, I don't have to add anything to the detail. 
So you see now I have dots and they've been the the um, the actual latitude and longitude are now rounded to one decimal place. But this isn't really enough granularity that I'm looking for. So I'm going to edit each of these calculations and maybe set it to two. And you can see I'm starting to get more detail already. And there we go, we get something like that. If we go to three, it's probably going to make the dots too compact. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. And I'm going to go ahead, and this time I'm going to drag the uh, the count of the rat sightings onto the color shelf. And now I can see a bit more intensity. So if I compare that to my density map, you can see I've got these clusters around Richmond Park. Um, not Richmond Park, um, Central Park. And I kind of have the same thing here with this rounded view. I'm going to go ahead and change my colors again. And maybe I'll stick with that same color palette and hit OK. Uh, I don't actually particularly like this color palette in this example, so uh, why don't we try something like, maybe I'll just use my Makeover Monday color palette. OK, and we can see we get a bit more intensity. These have borders on them, which I actually think help the lighter colored ones come out, because if I change the border to none, those lighter ones can kind of, and change the halos to none, the lighter ones can sometimes get a bit, uh, can get a bit lost in the background, but I'm okay with that. So I'm going to call this my uh, rounded uh, locations. And then the last one I want to do is hex bin locations. So I'm going to rename the sheet hex bin. And I'm going to use the two hex bin functions that are built into Tableau. So I'm going to call this hex x. And there's a function called hex bin x. And what this does, it allows you to map an xy coordinate to the x coordinate of the nearest hexagonal bin. Basically, we're creating bins of locations. So the x here is going to be our uh, longitude, and the y will be our latitude. OK. And then let's go ahead and duplicate that. And I'm going to call this one hex y. And the only thing you need to do here is change the, the function I'm calling to hex y. Longitude and latitude stay in the same place. So again, I'm going to drag those up to make them uh, dimensions. I'm going to highlight both of them and make them continuous. That way I get an axis. So the x, I'm going to go ahead <coughs> and drag that onto my, uh, to my columns and put my y on the rows. And uh, you'll see I don't get a whole lot of information because everything is so rounded that I, that I don't really get that much useful information. So, um, okay, so let's see what we need to do different then. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a parameter and I'm gonna call this my scaling factor. So we need to scale the hex bins in order to uh, have them show more granularity. So I'm just going to set it to an integer. And maybe my default value, I'll just leave it as 1 for now so we can see what it does. Let's show that parameter. And then I want to go into each of these calculations and I'm going to edit them. So I'm going to do my hex bin longitude times my scaling factor, my latitude times my scaling factor, and then I'm going to divide that whole thing by my scaling factor. So that'll reset it to be, this will, dividing by the scaling factor will reset it as a uh, latitude and longitude field. So it'll make it kind of within those boundaries. So now I can set my x geographic role to a longitude. And then let's edit the hex y. And let's do times the scaling factor. Latitude times the scaling factor and then divide the whole thing by the scaling factor. Let's hit OK. And then I could set the geographic role for the Y to be the latitude. OK, and we start to get a map. Great. So we see a bit more information there. So let me actually show you what happens if I don't divide by the scaling factor. So let me take both of these out. And let me edit the hex Y as well. OK, and I want to go ahead and uh, Let's see, so once I go ahead and I adjust my scaling factor, so let's say I make it 200, you'll see that I get this weird, these weird kind of latitudes and longitudes because these aren't values that exist. There's no, um, there's no latitude of 8,121. So if I divide them by the scaling factor, I'm then kind of resetting them into uh, legitimate latitude and longitude. OK, we do that. And now we get something like that. Oh, and it looks like I guessed pretty closely to the number that we need. OK, so let's do the same thing we did before with the colors. So we used 
the count of the rat sightings. So let's go ahead and put that on color. And we can now edit our color palette and I'm gonna make it, I'll use the same one again and hit OK. And we get something very similar, but you'll see they're a bit more tightly packed together in our hex bin. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my borders and my halos again to get rid of that kind of fuzziness around the outside. And the benefit of, of, um, of the scaling factor is I can now say 300, right? And now they get more packed together, but I can adjust the size. And I can kind of make them as close together as I would like. Or maybe I go to 250. So I've got lots of different options here. Much more control with the hex bins over the, si over the, um, the amount of circles that are shown. If you remember back here in the rounded locations, when I just divided by, or when I when used just one decimal place, they were spread really far apart. If I use two, they look just about right. But if I use three, they'll all be overlapping and it won't work. So this is one of the benefits of using the hex bin instead. Uh, so again, I could maybe even go to 400 if I want, but then I get something very similar to the original. But if I reduce the size, you know, you, you have to play around with it a bit to get it just the size you want we can see a, a bit better here. Maybe if I get rid of my background layer, oops, didn't want to do that. So I want to go into my map layers and if I wash it out, you can see a bit better the, the shape of New York City and you can see those a bit better. So if I change this now back to 250 and adjust the size, you know, you can get them to fit just right if you want. I could then maybe change the shape and if I make it, uh, let's say I make it more uh, like hexagons. So let me find my hexagon shape. Uh, where are those here? So this would be under my icons. If I make them hexagons, you can see they all start to fit together nice and neatly. Um, so I can just continue to play with the sides very, you know, a very small amount. And you could see them kind of get packed together, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave them as circles for now. Okay, so let me just go back and I'll go ahead and turn my map layers back on. So four different ways to create uh, rounded maps. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one at maybe 300. So we can see this again, that spread around uh, Central Park a bit better and something like that. So uh, hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe. There's a little subscribe button on the, on the screen. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get uh, notifications of all of the tips that are posted on this YouTube channel. And thank you very much. Have a good day.